Hello, welcome to Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa, and we are on to another wonderful episode of Footprint. The stories have been told in parts, but there are some personalities that are able to put all together in one stream. We are here to talk to one of such wonderful men. Just stay tuned. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking to another general. Welcome once again. Welcome back. It's still Footprint. And uh, now you know who we are talking about. He is Air Marshal Napoleon Ashley Lawson. Lassen. Lassen. Air Marshal Napoleon Ashley Lassen. Does the name ring a bell? If you, maybe you are too young, but um, just Google it and you 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 find something interesting. Okay. All right, sir. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. And we are grateful and um, and happy birthday to you. Thank you very much again. <laughs> and um, you just turned how many years again? I just turned 89 years of age. 89 years? You look very good for 89, I must say. Well, I always try to keep fit. You never know when another revolution will come in. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. And you know, we have, while we invited him, we thought that we would bring um, someone I consider a veteran on this program, Wing Commander um, Sobojo, you know, Wing Commander Sobojo has had his turn on this. But we, for, for a reason that you get to understand later, we thought that he would be a good pairing um, to Air Marshal Ashley Larson. So, Wing Commander, I salute. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us, making time for, um, to be part of this. Uh, so we are we're just going into the story of Air Marshal Ashley Larson. Um, at some point, he was the CDS, is that correct? Yes. Um, that's the Chief of Defense Staff. Um, that means so many things to anybody who understands what happens in the, in the military. Um, but we'll take it one step at a time. So, so who are you? I am a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. born in Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. I'm excited. Where? I was born in the river state in the town called Port Harcourt. Oh, Port Harcourt. But, Nigeria. but Port Harcourt, at the time, they, they behaved like they were, they were Western, Western people, white men, and, you know, the weather was a bit not like every other well, part Port of Harcourt Nigeria. Is a very nice place. Very nice town, place. You know. But they were stylish. Somehow, because probably there was a big port. Because the port, 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 okay. And then they are not too far from Kalabatu, which had another big port. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of Europeans in those the days Europeans used influenced to, them. and whatnot used to enter Nigeria too. And then you have the delta of so many big uh, rivers. Niger, Niger delta, delta, delta you know, yeah. Many inlets through mm -hmm. the river. Do you remember growing up in Port Harcourt? Yes, I was born there. <laughs> up until on, which on, age? In March 1934. 1934, March. 29th March, 1934. Wow. Oh, you have the same birth date as the current president. I see, I don't know, I don't know when he was born. But I know he wasn't born in 1934 though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the 29th March. March. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. yeah, and a few others. Anyway, so you lived in Nigeria and then at yes, the time, I, what did you know, what, what did you make of the politics of Nigeria, if you remember anything? Well, by the time the politics started developing to yeah. the state it is today, uh, I, I, had been, I, I left Nigeria to come to Ghana. So you left before I, the Civil yes, War? Yes, I, I left before the Civil War, in fact. I left Nigeria in the, about November 1948. 1948? I left That's way camp, before our independence. Way before Ghana's independence. How did you travel? I came by truck. We used to have these big, big um, ball college trucks, very big ones. Uh -huh. And then you find about six to 10 people sitting on top. And the journey from Lagos or Idiroko, near Lagos, to Ghana. Uh, to, to Ghana would take you a good three days. Three days? Uh, three days. You're on the road? On the road. 
because we were stopping at each checkpoint. Uh -huh. And you stop at the, the yeah. same, uh, then you come to the Togo one, wow. and then Aflao. But you were young. So, how did you find yourself? Um, how did you manage with your parents? Or well, you? my father had a, a, a niece who was about 40 then, and who used to visit Ghana or the Gold Coast in those days. He used to come as far as to Kita and had friends. He used to trade with people there. And so he asked her to take me and my little um, um, nephew to come to Ghana to do the course at um, Zion College. Okay, so, I so you, did, you, you, you did your primary uh, ed education, education there? In Port Harcourt. In Port Harcourt. And then I moved to Joss. In Just the plateau, the plateau, plateau yeah. province, uh -huh. where I did my elementary school education, oh, wow. and then from Jos, I moved to Yola in the Adamawa province of Nigeria. You know, at the time was Adamawa a state on its own? Uh, it was a state. It was called Adamawa, all right. Okay, it was a state, you know, and Yola was the capital. Capital, okay. And it was from there that my father decided to send me to go. My father used to work for. USC, the United okay. African Company. Mm -hmm. He was at that time the chief accountant for United for USC in the north of Nigeria. So, oh, I see. Yeah. So that 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 and took you how, around. I, that took wherever he went. You followed. We went with him. You Do know, you speak I, I, any Nigerian language? Hausa. I used to speak Igbo, but I've now. Oh, you will lose it. So that's yeah. it. But Hausa. Hausa. So you still. Because you I stayed in Jos. Mm -hmm. for about eight to nine years before. Oh, you then know, you speak the Nigerian Hausa. I was a Nigerian Hausa, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> you, remember, you remember anything in Hausa? How are you doing? Kind of laugh, yeah. Kind of laugh, yeah. <laughs> laugh, yeah, low. Laugh, yeah, low, that sort of thing. In Azaka, where are you going? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and then secondary school, you had to come to I Ghana. I had to come to Ghana. And which school did you choose? Because there was well, a, my Achimota father school. had intended for me wait, to go wait. to Achimota, <laughs> which was a popular school in Ghana in those days. You know, mm -hmm. popular also in Nigeria. People in Nigeria have heard of Achimota. Yes, yes. And I think the whole of West Africa, people have heard of Achimota. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to. But then he had uh, another friend in Jos, an airway man as well, who one Mr. Atipo, I think that was the name, who said, look, there is this new school called the Zion College of West Africa, which has been started by a reverend called Reverend Fiao. And it's a very good school. And I would suggest that um, you send your son there. So my father changed his mind and mm -hmm. decided to send me to but Ghana. Proud to your attendance or within the same period, we've, you had Nigerians who later on became statesmen in Nigeria who attended that school. Indeed. You remember? Any I of remember. The I can't. I, I don't, this was not Did Azikiwe, Azikiwe? Azikiwe didn't go to that school. Uh -huh. I know Azikiwe because he wasn't living too far from our house when we were in Port Harcourt. Wow. He had then set up this. You mean Namdi Azikiwe? Yeah, he had this um, press thing, West African The newspaper. Pilot. The West African uh, Pilot, yeah. I think uh -huh. it was called yeah. then, was his newspaper. And so, wow. We to, and he was a guy who tried to dress funnily. He would put trousers, wear the tokota that we have in Ghana here. <laughs> with a, 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 a bubu or jumper, and then put a helmet on. And you could always <laughs> see him and know that it was Dr. Namde Azikiwe. Very popular then. Wow. Very, very popular then. Nice. So you didn't go to Achimota School, you went to? I went to Zion uh, College. Uh, that's Ziko, is it Ziko? Ziko was. Ziko was. Yeah. Ziko, Ziko, Ziko Zion College of West Africa. You remember some of your mates then? Oh, yes, I, I remember some of them. Um, um, I don't know if they are still alive. We had um, Kennel Amuzu. The Togwi Sri, there was a Togwi Sri Adelaja II. Togwi Sri Adelaja II. They called him Jinku. That is the king of the Anglo State. Mm -hmm. He was my classmate wow. in Zion College. And he's now passed on. Anyway. Oh, okay. He's passed on. So wow. He was my classmate. At but that Zion time. College, is it still around? It is still around. Because it used to be a private school. And I still think it's a private school. I don't know about that, but I still think it's a private oh, okay. school. You know? And I think that is one of the things that probably is not good about it. So the, 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 
a legacy. The, that is it. And it's yeah. making the school not to develop. Otherwise, it would have developed very, very fast into mm. a big school and a very, very popular one. Like yeah, that. I mean, but, for a private school to be <coughs> so attractive across mm. borders within the West African mm. region, mm. because I've, I've heard Nigerian statesmen who said they came Oh, to a few of them Zion came. College. I can't remember yeah. their yeah, names yeah, now, yeah. but a few of them came over. Nice. And we had lecturers from Sierra Leone, uh -huh. and some other parts of West Africa. At the time, correct me if I'm wrong, Sierra Leone was notable for education. Very much so. It was a Fura Bay University. Of course, and, yeah. Wow. And we had two lecturers from there, a lady, I can't remember her name, she was half caste, and then another Mr. Charles, I think, who was teaching English. Wow. Sierra Leone. Yeah. And you remember all, all well, these? Well, I was a young man then, these were guys teaching you then, so. <laughs> and one other person I remember, not a foreigner, but a native was Reverend Dovlo. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He later on became the principal of the school after Reverend Fiao. Wow. You know. And he was, he was your was, mate? No, he wasn't my mate. He was, he was a, a vice pr principal, principal of the school. Principal at the time. You know? oh, I man. was then young. I was about 13, 14 when I entered the school. You know. Great. Okay, people, so this is um, Air Marshal. <laughs> you know, Air Marshal Napoleon Ashley Larson. Um, so he's just opened it up, but we have uh, Wing Commander Patrick Sogbojo here. Wing Commander, it's um, we we call him Uncle Pat, so please permit me if I <laughs> if I do that. Um, at which point in your life did you encounter this man? Had had joined the Ghana Air Force from Achimota School, and uh, we had to do a bit of grading, where they grade you if you have the aptitude to become a pilot. You mean having passed? Have, you have to do the grading because you check you out. No, and not everyone who wants to be an air crew gets to, gets to become an air crew. So after the air crew, then we had to go and do the boot camp at the Tesla Military Academy. We did that for about six months. Then, Real boot camp? Yeah, that's why they put the military discipline in you. Oh. <laughs> Every country has a boot camp. It's not only for military, you learn yeah. like a normal sex form, but yeah. the emphasis is trying to push the military discipline and leave out your civilian attributes. And if you come out from a, good, a boot camp and are selected, you're a different person altogether. Then it came to a time when we military academy, Ghana had decided to buy jet fighters. In the interim, we did some gliding at Afenia School of Anna Wright, and a famous German pilot to Hitler. Taught us some gliding at Afenia. Then I think when Ghana Air Force decided to buy jets, the first in south of the Sahara, um, some of us were selected to go to Italy. And the morning of our departure from the airport was when I first met him. Because it was the captain of the aircraft who took us from Accra through Kano, then to Tamaraset to Rome. Okay. So my first counting as a general was sometime in 1964 when I first met him. So he was piloting one of the aircraft. Uh, one of the, do we have? Was there a Ghana Air Force aircraft? Ghana Air Force called Caribou. Mm -hmm. uh, take that 40 people. He was there with two other Ghanaian pilots and a Canadian. Right. You know, and it was quite an enjoyable flight from Accra to Kano, a night then to <coughs> Tamara State in the Sahara, then fly straight through uh, Benghazi. Where we also met uh, Colonel Gaddafi and Jalou, who had just returned from Staff College in France, stayed with them for about a few days. Then we cross the Mediterranean to Rome to begin our training. And that's the first time I met him. Wow. And, and the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, the rest. <laughs> we came back from Italy. He became a base commander. That was commander of the Air Force base in Accra. Wow. He became the commander of the Ghana Air Force. Mm. And then became the chief of defense staff. Wow. So now let's take it again. From Zion College, how did you um, handle the progression 
what happened after Zion College? Well, I finished Zion College in 1952. Mm -hmm. And um, um, my mother had then come from Nigeria into Ghana because my father was nearing his retirement age. And because I'm the only boy among four sisters, five sisters, my mother didn't want me to go back into Nigeria. I left my sisters there. I only came with two here. She wanted me to stay in Ghana. So I was forced to take up teaching appointments. After Zion College, in fact, I, didn't, I wasn't able to sit for my Cambridge School certificate before I left. There were some riots in Anglaga in those days. Mm. You know, the guys there like to probably disturb things for That's a while. Say, but to, 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 yes. <laughs> so I came into Ghana and in 1953 took up a pupil teacher's appointment at St. Anthony's School in Denu. Right. And whilst I was teaching, I was at the same time preparing for my Cambridge School certificate. Right. And fortunately, I passed it in July 1953. And after passing that exam, I started thinking of what to do. First, I thought probably I would go to the university to do geography and go and work for the uh, IMO, you know. Um, then I said, no, probably I should go and be a very well-trained teacher, going to a teacher's training school to become a very trained teacher. But then just at that time, and that is what my mother wanted. My mother wanted me to be a teacher, actually. She didn't want me to leave Deno at all. So she went to see the priest in charge of the Catholic school, the Reverend Father, and arranged with him to get me to a good teacher's training school. And there was one in Hallway then, St. Francis Teacher's Training College. Uh, but just about that time, this publication came out in Ghana Daily Graphic of the Minister of Defense wanting ex-secondary school students to apply to be trained as officers, to be commissioned as officers in the Ghana Armed Forces. And um, I saw it and said, well, I will take my chance. Which year was this? This was in 1954. Mm. So I deceived my mother when she said, I said I was going to Accra. She said, what are you going to? I said, I'm going to look for a school where I can do teacher's <laughs> training. <laughs> but then I came straight to Burma Camp. Wow. <laughs> I applied, they called me, I came to Burma Camp. This was not getting- You it, came it, alone? I came alone. And this was um, early part of 1955. So at the um, time, who, who was controlling the Ghana Air Force? As were they Ghanaians or? There was no Air Force then. Okay. We were just having the Gold I mean, Coast. It the was then, process. Ghana was then Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. And it was the Gold Coast Army. Mm -hmm. It was commanded by a British brigadier called Brigadier Perry. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole army was a good 82 to 85% officered by British officers. Wow. So about 15%, 10 to 15 were all Ghanaian yes. officers. Right. That was the first time I met Ankara. Ankara was uh, a young captain then. That's General Ankara. General Ankara. Then O2 mind. as well, Aferi, all these guys. And one Awaite, I think he's dead now. Yeah. They were all the young Aferi. This Aferi. is uh, Aquapim. Aquapim uh, Aferi. Yeah. Uh, O2 too is from O2, there. O2, yes, from, from there. Latin. They're, from they're from all life. young. Yeah. Michel. Michel, Michel, he's from Afa, not uh, a major okay. area. Uh -huh. You know, he, he, they he was. There. They he were the Ghanaian. Officers. Yeah, well, what we got to know later on is that um, at that time, the bulk of people applying to enter the Ghana army were from the north. But they couldn't read or write or speak English very well. At that time. So these gentlemen had been in the service, but as sergeant majors. Okay. O2, Michel, they were all sergeant majors. So um, the British call them in and use them as schoolmasters to teach these mm -hmm. people who came in from the north how to read and write English. Okay. So they all started their careers as sergeant majors. Right. And it was later on that, of course, when Nkrumah came in, that he wanted to Africanize and Ghanaianize that he started giving them commissions. Okay. And, uh, so when I came in, the O2s, the Ankras, the Michel had already 
gone to the stage where they had been sent to England to get a commission, a three months course for short service commission, and they all had it. And in fact, one of the tests we conducted, in those days you just don't come in and go. You come in, you are subjected to English language tests, written and oral, current affairs, you know. You have to do that as well, just to make sure that, that you are okay. And then after that, if you passed, they take you. And the person who was in charge of the group in which I was, 25 of us, was Ankara. Okay. It was, you know, you, so you he was an him officer. With a very pronounced bow leg in those days, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so he was in charge of my group, and um, that, that was it. And um, after so, that test, you go before a board, a very strong selection board of nine prominent persons. A.L.A. Du was around there, Robert Gardner was there, and then the, the most senior Ghanaian was the man who founded Accra Academy, Konwa. Mm -hmm. I remember him very well, because when I went for my final listing with the board, the, the general who was in charge, he came from Nigeria to, to sit on that board, because at this time, selection, there were men also from all parts of, of West Africa. Well, not the first one. The first one was all Ghanaian, but the second one uh, of West Africa. And so, but for this Ghanaian one, it was O2, not O2, Konwa. Konwa, uh, what's, t tell me, was he a reverend? Konwa was the founder of the Accra Academy. 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 Was he wasn't a reverend. reverend. No, he was just okay. uh, a heavy, education. yeah, you know, education yes, expert. Education. Right. Okay. And um, on this board, which had a general as the chairman, they will interview you and they ask me the question about what you should ask me about Nigeria and the politics, you have to speak to it and all that sort of thing. And then they will make their notes and say, go away. But when I came finally again, two times we went before the board, the, 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 the general in charge said to me, asked the last one, you look too young, I look boyish, I look very boyish in the, you know, you would think... Uh, How I old was, were you then? I was just um, um, 20, 20, 20, 20 okay. 21. You know. He said, but I look boyish, you know, smallish. He says, well, you look boyish, and I think um, I would like you to come next year and try again when you look matured. <laughs> then, there and then, Mr. Coldwell got up and said, the guy has done very well in all the subjects. Look at his results. He's done everything well and you want him to come back next year? I don't think so. ALA do back him. The other Ghanaians, they all backed him. And so the general couldn't succeed. Tell that was how I got ALA do again. Was he a politician? He wasn't a politician, he was a government official. Go okay. You know, he was the guy who worked with Nkuma. Nkuma, yeah. Nkuma, yeah. Uh-huh, because I, I connected that's that to Nkuma, Nkuma, yeah. So that's how Kona, because of Kona, they had to accept. He was the most senior Ghanaian on the team then. Mm. You know, you could see, I, I remember him well, always in a white Tuzo suit with tie on, you know. Good. But he was very, very At this active. time, he, had he um, started the work with Accra Academy? Yes, they say he had yeah. started. Okay. He had started. But he lent support to the he was a, yeah. they, they knew him as an educationist, mm -hmm. and so the, the British government Good. used him a lot. So yeah. you finally got... So uh, with his... Assistance, I was accepted. Mm. You know, we were accepted about about 38 to 40 of us, wow. including also serving soldiers. We Ooh. had sergeants and sergeant majors who, who want to be officers, officers who also applied with us. So they all were. I had a person like General Amenu who was in my intake. And uh, uh, Amenu. Amenu, who is dead oh, and yeah. gone now. Amenu, yeah. He was in my intake. One who cracked. He was also from the Volta region. Yes, right. one Okraku, one Amate, I think it's a guy. Mm -hmm. so all in, in, then, of course, I have other civilian, other, other young men like me, like Bob Aqua, Brigadier Aqua, he's dead now, mm -hmm. Brigadier David Asare, mm -hmm. and then the major that was killed with the judges. Mm, Aqua. Sam Aqua. Sam Aqua was also oh, my he was all in your intake. Oh, yes, all in my intake. Wow. We all passed, you know. We'll talk about Sam Aqua. Okay, you know. People, so you are listening to <laughs> Air Marshal. Napoleon Ashley Larson. Ashley Larson. You know, it's there's so much to talk about, but we just needed to establish one thing about who he is. And now I think we've done pretty well. We'll take a short break. When we come back, he'll take us through the journey 
of the military academy itself, his experiences, what he got to understand about the military, his own expectations, and the people he met. We'll be right back. This is Footprint. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back to the program. It's Footprint. I'm Samuel Atamensa. And in this episode, we have Ermasha Ashley Larson. But we also ha he also has company uh, in the person of Squadron, uh, sorry, Wing Commander, Wing Commander Patrick Sogbojo. Um, they, are, they are both retired, retired, being retired for some. But my understanding is that when you retire um, above a certain level, you still keep your your title is that correct but at your retirement is conferred it's not if it's not conferred you can use your rank in civil street any rank below major yeah you cannot use retired i see a lot of people captain retired <coughs> or fly lieutenant retired you can't use it retirement will be confirmed or you ranks from major and above oh that's it eh? that's yes. it so the one we hear, Captain Retard, or it is it's, not, right. it's not the standard. It's, it's not the standard, standard. No, it's not right. Now we know something. Thank so you, you very much. call yourself Captain Retard. Yeah, you, 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 you can't even use... You can't even use... I must get some. Thank you, you for you mentioning You can't use your name. rank <laughs> in civil street. <laughs> but major and above, you if can. you left on a good note, yeah. it's con it normally it's the last paragraph. Oh. You entitled to use your rank in Civil Street. It's confirming. Wow. It's this not is, automatic. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time. Thank you for the education. So people, now you know. It's not everybody that went through the army will keep their name. You know, we'll Rollins keep, kept their name. Even Rollins was, he was not title. supposed to keep their name. Time. But he's no more here, so I'll, I'll <laughs> let him go. <laughs> okay, so your, your time in the academy, how long did it take? I didn't, do, the, let me I, I didn't do my military academy training here. Yes. When you went and you passed. When I went before the for, board. Yeah, for the interview. Yes. And you, what did you tell your mom? When I went and I told her that I joined the... I went, they gave us about two weeks leave to go and sort ourselves and come back uh -huh. to start our training. I told her, she asked where I'd been. I said I'd been in the army. And uh, she, she was disappointed. But then I, <laughs> even before then, a cousin of hers saw me in Accra in the camp with soldiers and whatnot and went to tell her, I saw your son with soldiers. I hope it's not joined. So she didn't know how to get to me until I went back to tell her that I was in the army. She, 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 she couldn't do anything. Yeah. So she just had to, to, just to give let you a blessing. Yes, just give me the blessing. And then I came back and then. Um, Okay, so tell us the story. So what was the nature of the training and where did you do the training? Well, after the selection board, about 28 of us were successful. Uh, half of that number were all ex-secondary stu students and the others were military persons. So they decided to send us to the regimental training center in Kumasi. This was in... in, 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 in uh, January 56, about January 55, I beg your pardon, mm. January 55. So this is the regimental training center will be the one in... That is where the all Bantama. recruits go through, anybody who joined the armed forces, yeah. civilian, if he wants to join and what, they all go there to do their training to become soldiers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So the center is there for eight weeks. The idea being that they want us, since we want to become officers, to experience what the ordinary soldier goes through 
before it's so this place that you're talking about had a site that they used to train some group called boys company yeah it was it's after all... us that the boys company That's came a yeah the boys I mean, company came years after us. I know the boys company. Yeah, and, uh, I used to school by the place. Oh, but I see. I, I love their haircut. I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at this time, I'm speaking of a time when the British were, we were still Royal Church, West yeah. African Frontier Force and mm -hmm. the country was still Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, about, I, I joined in the Gold Coast mm -hmm. time. So we went there for, for eight weeks and it was eight weeks of uh, drill, Weapon training, they were just grueling you. It was a grueling, they say, And you're ready for it. And, and, and we, we were, well, you had to do it. But uh, then um, if you didn't pull your weight there, then you, 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 you had it. So I remember one exercise, the drill exercise. The Sergeant Major, I think it was from Nigeria. In those days, Ghana, the Gold Coast Army had a lot of Nigerians, Sierra Leoneans and whatnot, all all mixed. Teshikam was the West African Command Training School. And oh. there were all sorts of people, Nigerians, Sierra Leoneans, all. Oh, okay. It was then still part of the Royal West African Frontier Force, mm -hmm. commanded by a British general. Right, you remember his name? At the time I joined, it was Whistler, General Whistler. Whistler, Whistler Barracks. Whistler, the, name, the barracks was named after, but before Whistler came, GFAT. And it was General GFAT who did a lot of things for the armed forces before we start to So over. the Jifad Road was named yes, after him. Yes, after Road, Jifad, Jifad Road. So wow. we, we spent these eight weeks in Kumasi, you know, doing all sorts of things to give you an idea of what the ordinary man goes through. And I was nearly, again, kicked out of the military training because there was this sergeant major from Nigeria who was drilling us on the square. He drilled us for a good 15 minutes without stopping. And when he halted us, we were all tired and panting heavily. On my left was Brigadier General Asare. He was then potential officer Asare. He said, Ashi, he called Ashley, I'm tired, I'm tired. And then all of a sudden, he leant on my left shoulder. So I had to put my rifle down. And hold him, to support him. Hold. And that annoyed the drill sergeant taking the drink. He shouted, potential officer, stand still. Just like, I didn't mind him because the guy was already on me. So I managed to drag Asari, then took my rifle, dragged him to the guard room where they had a little medical about 60 yards away. Yeah. Then he later on found that it was serious, so he came and helped. But that ended the parade. So this parade, would be happening in that square in front of the square. buildings. The big square in, yeah, in Kumasi, in front of yes. The buildings, yes. Yeah. And there too, the OC was an English man, an English lieutenant colonel. Yeah. So yeah. after the parade, the next day, I was charged. The first time I knew what they called charging you in the Already. military. The man, the sergeant charged me, took me straight to. Right. And I thought that was the end of me. <laughs> so when I appeared before, the Lieutenant Colonel, the British officer, he said to, every, to the sergeant, I'm going to squash this case because the guy tried to help somebody who was sick. In fact, Asara spent three days in the hospital. Wow. If they had kicked me, he would have come out and found that I was gone. Yeah, but for your intervention, so, it so, would have so been worse. So the, 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 the Colonel said, I will take the opportunity of this thing to explain to you what it means to obey a lawful command, the order that the Sergeant Major gave. So he explained it. So, so we must learn that lesson now. But in this particular instance, with Asari collapsing, Asilassin did the right thing, you know. That was it. So that saved me. So, wow. <laughs> so we spent eight weeks there, and we left and came to Accra. In fact, the one thing we recognize, we remember very well about the eighth time in Kumasi that they were building Okonfuanochi Hospital. Yeah, because it's next door, actually. Yes, they were building that hospital. Yeah. So that's you see it from yes. where you are. Yeah. That's it. Wow. So after that, we came to Accra. Now, to start the actual officer cadet training in a school called the Regular Officers Special Training School. Mm -hmm. This um, was the, the school set up to train people who want to become officers. Okay. It was set up by the, the British general I just mentioned. So it was in, started by GFAT, but then Whistler took it over. And so uh, in today's terms, which school would this be? 
Well, it was after Ross had been in existence for about 10 years that they came to form the Military Academy. Am I right? The Military Academy it, came in about... 60 something, is it? 60, 61. 61. Okay. No, so, so that became military. Yeah, academy. Okay. But oh. then we, after the training at Ross, we were flown to the UK. We went first to the Mons Officer Cadet School. Where? The Mons Officer, in all the shots. In all the shots, okay. yeah. yeah. But then the Mons Officer Cadet School was for British graduates. At that time, the British National Service was in operation. So graduates. Yeah. We have been trained yeah, in, all in, the in, in, that, in that place. Mm -hmm. So we spent three months there before passing out. But I must make this comment. The instructors there were very, very, very impressed and pleased with our presence. Mm. Because all this training we had in Kumasi and all this, in, they appreciated what it meant. Mm -hmm. So they used us for demonstration to explain to the graduates who are now trying to get you know, certain things and whatnot, you know. Mm. And, uh, and, and I remember the final exercise we did on that, in, in that place. Uh, you know, uh, it was an exercise to show you that you are a soldier, you are going to attack your enemy, but your bullets are finished, so the only thing you have left is your rifle and your bayonet. So this one is a, a life and death thing. So we were seven, four Ghanaians, two Nigerians, and one Sierra Leonean. We were to demonstrate this to the British but it's all graduates, but training to be officers. Yeah. And so we had to prepare ourselves. I remember that they camouflaged our faces and what not. And then we advanced to attack. These boys, the British boys, were all in their trenches with their weapons. They said we should attack them to demonstrate how this exercise will be done. And David Asare, he's dead now, my colleague, he was leading us. And as we approached these boys, we became wild. You have to show that you are wild. You know, it's your last stage. No bullet, nothing. So it's life and death. So we are shouting, hey, hey, calling all sorts of gods and whatnot. In, the out, in and everything. <laughs> and the British boys in their trenches jumped out and ran away. <laughs> Left all their rifles, their everything, and went away. So at the end of the exercise, the, the, the colonel who was debriefing us called them and said, why did you run out? <laughs> We were ex trying to explain something to demonstrate. They said they thought we had gone mad. And come <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the last so, time you joke there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, the, yeah. the, the Kenyan leader says, this is what it must be in the final. And we don't have weapons, <laughs> we don't have bullets, so you have to go for it. And That's we were really praised. Wow. So it was very good. Wow. It was wow. very good. Wow. So, so from all the shots, then we entered Sandhurst. Sandhurst, okay. We that entered the main, the, that the main military academy, the Royal Military Academy in Sandhurst. Which, which, where, which year would this be again? This was January 1956. Oh, one year before our independence. Yeah. We were there when Ghana got independence and very good. We enjoyed this in Sandhurst because Nkrumah came there for the first time to see wow. us. Wow. After the independence or before? Before, before the independence. Before. Tell me before about Sandhurst first. When you go no, after after the independence. After the independence. Okay. When you, what what did you know about Sandhurst before you went there? We knew that it was the top military training academy for the British government. All the good British monarchs were sent there. Mm -hmm. Prince Charles spent some time there. Yeah. Harry spent some time there. Yeah. They all go there, you know. And so and it's a place. The military academy is such that. When you go in there, the discipline and whatnot is such that if you come out of that place and you're an officer and somebody, if you are bad, you can't stay there. They will kick you out before you're finished. Again. <laughs> if you are bad, you can't complete the course. Good. So you know? when you got there, you, you knew that you had arrived. We knew that we had arrived. I would imagine that you, you also met um, in, your, in your cohorts, you met people from other countries. Yes, when I went into Sandhurst, we met people like Gowan. He was one intake ahead of me. Tell me about that. Gowan, you mean, Gowan you mean was, General Gowan? General Gowan, Yakubu, Jack, we call him. Yakubu Gowan? Gowan yes. Well, let me sit well, man. <laughs> you mean you were in the school with Gowan? With Gowan and a, a number of other officers, you know. Those of them, most of them Igbos who took part in the war in Nigeria, you know. Yeah, Ojuku's people. Yes. Over here in Ghana, I trained with uh, uh, what is his name? Ephraim. 
Effiong. Effiong was yeah. in my intake in Ghana. Yeah, that's general. He became general. Too, yes, right? he became general. general. Yeah. But it was short service. Oh, okay. I trained with Effiong. Wow. Wow. But in Sandhurst, yes, we met Gowan. And then, no, I'm, I'm happy about this go one thing because, <laughs> because obviously, because he of was, what he, he did. was in take 19, three months ahead of us, and we were in take 20. And when you got there, you you could interact with the Nigerians easily. Well, my house I helped me a great deal because of your background. Um, yeah. other people who came and met us in Santos were Kojo Chikata. he was one year behind me. Oh, Captain Chikata, yeah, Kojo Chikata met me, Kote. Bob Kote. Bob, um, 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 Idisa, Hamidou, Hamidou came General Hamidou, yeah. He came as I was leaving. I left in December, he entered in January. Um, so, many, you know. No, it's interesting, interesting to remember some of oh, them. Yes, there were, yeah. there were people. I met Gowan, Gowan left. So how was he like? Very nice guy, very, he, was, he was the first African cadet to be made a cadet sergeant. In, at Sandhurst. At Sandhurst, and I was the second. Mm, what, what, what? Tell us, what does that mean? It means he held a, a well, a top a office, cadet position. He was a senior cadet. He could, he had some privileges. He could do to give elder orders to others and do certain things and what. And you had, you had um, trainees from other Commonwealth oh, countries. Oh yes, we had yeah. Malaysians. Mm -hmm. We had a few Indians. We had some South Africans. Um, in Ross, Sierra Leoneans came, because we are still West Africa then, yeah. you know. So there were Sierra Leoneans. There was one Sierra Leonean in my thing, called Air Wheelie. He was, there were two, there were two Nigerians in the, my group, yeah. and then others in the group of the ex-soldiers who were seeking, but they went on a different course, three mm -hmm. months course, in places like, say, uh, Eating Hall and Mons of Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Sanders is the full, Officers' course, regular officers' course for so two years. So how long did you stay in Sandhurst? Two years full. Two full years. Two full years. Now, out of curiosity, what did you, how did your mother react to it when you told her you are going to Abruzzi at the she, time? She she was wild. <laughs> she was when I was in Sandhurst, the Suez War came on. The Suez, the, you know, of the Suez War that took place, and I think it was '56 or so, and there was massive enlistment of people and whatnot. And I don't know who went to tell my mother that this enlistment is taking place, and so your son may be going to the Suez to fight. <laughs> so I was Suez in Sand. Yes, I was in, yeah. Sand in the, on exercise when they said I was going on commandant's orders. The commandant wanted to see me. The commandant of Sanders was the major general. Okay. And in Sanders, if the commandant wants to see you, it means one of two things. Either you are being sacked or, or you are assignment. done well, he wants to, to, to commend you. So when I walked in and saluted, said, relax, that's the last thing. He said, your mother thinks that we are sending you to Suez. So I was wondering how he got to know. <laughs> so he gave me the letter my mother had sent. <laughs> so I took the letter and went to say, well, I wouldn't reply, but you go and tell your mother, call him and say, you are not going anywhere. So I saluted and walked out. Wow, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a, it's a nice story to to you know because the, the Nigerian influence at the time was also very uh, oh, very great. great. Very great. We had the son of the Emir of Katsina, one of the biggest um, northern regions, and the Emir was in the good, military. Yes, it was one year. It was with Kojo Chikata. Mm. It was with Kojo Chikata and Chumberima. Okay. Chumberima uh, and Kojo. So Ojuku instructed you at Rust. Ojuku, he had finished his degree in Cambridge or Oxford, yeah. and then joined and got the short service commission. And he came to Accra. He came to Accra. He was then teaching in the military academy, teaching um, English so and he, some other subjects. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I missed that, of course. That's why we commander so what do I say? I had then just transferred. So he, he met us in this area. So Ojuku, who, who was the other person against Gowon in that was then, he was a young officer. You know, his father was fabulously rich. Mm -hmm. They had what they call Ojuku Transport, one of the biggest in transport Nigeria, owners. Yeah. And this was his son. Ibo business. Yes. Yeah. And this boy was trained, all his training took part in England. In England. So after getting his degree in Oxford, mm -hmm. I think he got a short service commission and then came Where, out. In England? In England. Okay. But recognized by the Nigerian army. And Ghana so, Army as well. And Ghana, we were still then West Africa, West, okay. Royal West. So he came to Ghana and he was teaching military law and some other subjects in the military 
um, and, and tells you this thing. By the so, time I came back, they had formed the, 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 the military academy because I was a lieutenant when I transferred into the Air Force. So right. Juku was around. So, so Juku he came was teaching to teach, here. He came to teach the first bunch of cadets, flying, people who came to fly, school okay. children. And because I was also part of that first group, Mm, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to draw uh, some link, you know. So you had known Gowon. In Sandhurst. In Sandhurst. Oh, yes. And then you came to meet Ojuku in Ghana. In Ghana, yeah. Um, so fast forward, when you... when the I civil... knew he was in Port Harcourt when I was a young boy. Maybe he was also a small boy. That's Ojuku. Because his father was in Port Harcourt, doing his transport business okay. there. Okay. You know. So when, you, when the civil war broke out, how did you react to it? I was here then. Yeah, how did you, knowing, kn knowing that you knew both uh, key I was worried <laughs> for my father and all my people. You know, I have, I have only sisters. I have yeah. My father, I was the only son among five girls, you know. Yeah. So I was worried about them. The, the, but you knew that it was Gowan versus Sojuku. And that, well, Gowan came in and tried to put things right. He was a very nice, pleasant guy, you know. Yeah. He didn't like trouble, and he did what we all expected of him. Mm. And, but he had difficulties. Yeah. At the time he came in, they had General Ironsi, whom I have met, I know yeah, Ironsi. Ironsi, yeah. Ironsi was made of people like Michel, Utu, and whatnot. It was also an honor that he had oh, Ironsi too came to Ghana? Well, they all... Passed through. Did, they met in England. Okay. Uh, when they, they were all... WOs or warrant officers were sent to England to be commissioned. And they met, he met the Michels, the O2s and whatnot in England, and they all were given the short service commission and came back. They were the people in charge in those days. Wow. They were the people in charge in those days until we came back from so Add something to it. You know mm -hmm. when the Buru Conference for Nigeria, yes. when the leaders came, I was Ojoku's ADC. Ah, see. And we disarm Gowon, a few on the rest of them, but we did not disarm Ujuku. I took him to a brewery. Oh, I see. So Ghana was biased. We were supporting <laughs> Ojuku. Yes. Obviously, he had yes. worked here. <laughs> he, he had worked here, and then we also been made by the famous CIA that it was a war between Christians and, and then Northerners. And Northerners. So we were supposed to go, even go and bomb Lagos. <laughs> At that time, Nigeria force didn't have jet fighters. We had. Wow. You know. So, as in, supposedly go and bomb Lagos in support of Ojuku. Ojuku, yes. <laughs> wow. So, one Ojuku also fled wherever he took off. So, Accra, he landed. Mm. And his aircraft was at Accra base for a long time before the Nigerians came from it. Okay. Because he had talked to one, all of them in Teshi. So, Go yes. later came to Teshi. Gowan well. came to Teshi. Gowan was, was one of the officers who passed through to, Ross yes. to UK. Oh, so he did Teshi before going to Southwest? Yes, Hest. yes. Most of them passed through. Because really of before. that, I brought this book for you to, to see yes, some of yes, those yes, guys. Yes, who, yes, yes. These are all the first, all those who went to Ross. Okay, let me see you this You can one. see our Okai who took over from me at CBS. Mm -hmm. Here you have Banjo, I know Banjo, Ado, General Ado. Yeah. The two of us were the first to go into Reiki when it was, I was a Reiki, I was an army officer before. Yeah. This before thing, that. you know. And then when you come down, you see Okran, General yeah. Okran when the, they are General two. Okran yes. who passed away only last year yes. or so. Yes, they were all there. General Okran, Sani Thomas. Yeah, Sani Thomas. Amwa, yeah. he was a Navy officer. You will know Ijo Kotoka. Was in Slater, yeah, boy, all these were there. But they were short service, of, they were sergeants or sergeant majors whom Tell they me did. about this Slater. Was he Ghanaian? Yes, Ghanaian. Well, his father was um, British. British. Yeah. It's like Michel. Yeah. Okay, it's like cool. Michel. You okay. know, so they were, so Ross 1 is Okai. All these others were 2, 3, I'm Ross 4. These are the people I, I trained with. So myself. Ross again is the Royal, what, what do you Regular call? Officer Regular Officer Special Officer. Training School. Oh, okay. We are in school, eh? we are in school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we, are, we, we will take a short break. This is still Footprint with Air Marshal Ashley Larson, um, who also has a company of Wing Commander Patrick Sobojo. And uh, so far, so good. We are still learning. We still have some time to go. But we'll take this short break. When we come back, he will tell us what became of his profession after he passed out of the Academy. This is Full Sprint. We'll be right back.
City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back to the program. It's Footprint with Air Marshal Ashley Larson. Um, so at this point, you were uh, just exiting from Sandhurst, um, you know, coming back to Ghana, right? Well, before coming back, I had to do my young officer's course, mm -hmm. as I said. Still in the uh, UK? In the UK, yes. So it was a six to seven months course, artillery course. Wow. In Lark Hill. Lark Hill. Lark Hill in the UK. This is in the Midlands, right? In the Midlands. No, yeah. south. It is south. South, okay. It's south. I've forgotten the county. Yeah. Yeah. It's a six months course, you know, because you are dealing with heavy guns, mm. 25 pounders and whatnot. You know, then with Ghana heavy, had some. Heavy guns. Heavy, heavy the motor, you have the three Not the motor, cafe, but that we, you have the 25 pounders, the fire during ceremonial parades, which we have yeah. those things. And we want to specialize on them. <laughs> but you know why the Ashantis or the can say Premo too. They say what? Premo. Premo. When 12 uh, o'clock. Uh -huh. It's perimatic. That's why they boomed. Oh, okay. And at the fort to defeat the Ashantis. So Perimante became Premo. So when they hear the Premo, it means 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavy guns. So in Kumasi back in the day, for a long time, yes. at 12 o'clock, that, yes, that yes, they used yes. to sound. That's where right. the Ashanti surrounded. So the British oh, this is in front of Kingsway. Then. Yes, yes, the, the fort. Then yes. mm -hmm. It's after they boomed the Premo thing that frightened them and they decided to surrender. And they said Premo to? Premo to 12 o'clock, <laughs> up to today. When they say Premato, this is Perry Martin. Mm, Martin. It's Perry Martin. Perry Martin. Ah, another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the young officers course in, in Lack Hill, yeah, yeah? It was six to seven months, and after that, came, came back to Ghana, Ghana, came back and served in the battery, in the artillery, Ghana. We were then, where the Air Force Mess is today. You mm -hmm. know where the Air Force Mess is? Yes. That was our barracks. The only thing in that area then was Elwak Stadium. Mm -hmm. And of course, the uh, Lands Department building, yeah, they were all colonial yeah, buildings. Yeah, that sort yeah. of service distance. So mm -hmm. that, that was where we were serving um, as artillery officers. And the only two black officers were Ado, General, he was before me, followed by my. I met Ado in Sandhurst, he was in Sandhurst too. Mm -hmm. You know, Ado was also in Sandhurst. He was, he was a good almost a year and also be ahead of me. Mm. But I met him in Sandhurst and whatnot. You know. And then you, you met him at the artillery? Then, no, I think he finished, came back, mm -hmm. and we were together. I came back to Ghana, and then later on, when I finished, and I was posted, I came back to Ghana, I went to the artillery unit, behind there until uh, 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 they, 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 they changed from artillery into armored regiment. Oh, okay. They wanted to do away with the guns, and go away for the so armored you, regiment. by the time you came, Ghana had attained independence? Yes. Independence took place while I was in Sandhurst. Mm -hmm. And in fact, my intake in Sandhurst and other Ghanaians doing courses, we went to the Ghana High Commission to take part in the, in the ceremony. I think it was Ed, Sir Edward Asafwaje, there was some... Yes, Sir Ed, he was, he was the he first was, ambassador. And, uh, he, he was the ambassador then. The first High Edward. Commissioner. But before then, there was Mercer, a tall man. His son is a lawyer now. You see him on the TV telling lies. All the the time. <laughs> you didn't say that. <laughs> he said he's such a liar now. You can see that he's pure second second attack rascal. You know, but the Air Force was in second attack already, so I know I know those guys. I used to go to say, I know them well. <laughs> you, you see Mesa you know, on TV Mr. telling lies. Yeah, I like the father. You know Mr. Akenya? Akenya yeah, was Akenya. The, in head of the, the uh, I think, uh, whatever thing. <laughs> Mpuma's thing in those, Akenya is from Zima area. Yeah. yeah. His, his daughter was in the military as a nursing sister. 
And yeah, the daughter Mr. married Kenya wanted Chris. me to marry her, but Chumbarima. Chris, Chris, uh, <laughs> no, Chumbarima. 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 Mm. And I wasn't keen then. So I was too serious with seven, so I didn't show interest in that. I will not leave here today. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> so when you came to the artillery, um, um, so now... I came to join the artillery mm -hmm. from England, and um, uh, not quite um, three months or so, the decision came from... Nkrumah then was active mm -hmm. as um, 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 he had then become prime minister. Now tell know. me, while you were at Sandhurst, yes. you had an encounter with Nkrumah, is that Nkrumah correct? came down there to see us, and um, it was a big day. Uh, it was a big how day. was it like? He had come, I think, for the prime minister's conference, mm -hmm. and then um, he sent A. L. Edu, the tall man, mm -hmm. to come to the... So to treat the cabinet. Yes. So the commandant said, well, get Ashley Larson. We had a commandant in that time. That was the second commandant who was a crack man. When I say crack, he was a paratrooper. Mm -hmm. He never liked to wear this type of capsule. He put his green barrier, you know, and he wanted to show he was tough. So he called me, the president is coming, and what are you guys going to do? How do we meet him? How do I address him and whatnot? So I briefed him. But something happened two hours before Nkrumah came. Mm -hmm. Because Nkrumah was coming, they displayed the flags of all the countries whose students were in Sandhurst. We saw it, but two hours before Kwame came, the Ghana flag was missing. So the commandant went wild and called me in. As the last thing I noticed that your country's flag was missing, I'm very sorry for it, but I'm going to make sure that it is there before your president came. In fact, as I left his office going back to the, Somebody has put the flag, no commander, top guy, the flag started flying, but he <laughs> apologized for it. <laughs> he sent um, A.L. Edu to come and see the commandant. I met him, tall man. A.L. Edu came to apologize that the notice was short for the visit, but Nkrumah thought this was an opportunity to see the officers in the army, that he, the armed forces. He would, so he came to Sandhurst, and it was a big day. Mm -hmm. All the other West Africans had to join together to come. They could, they could relate. They, they could relate. Good. It was very, very nice. He came in. It was a good parade. The commandant took him to the old college, which is the oldest building, to show him things. And then, you know, Nkrumah had the habit of, after talking to the commandant, he tell them all to give him where he wants to talk only to the Africans. You know, Kwame, <laughs> politics is always in his head. So he talked to us, we should keep it going, we should do well. As for Ghanaians, he's going to make sure we get the best equipment. And, and he kept his word. I am leaving this thing to show that Nkuma kept his word all the time. And that was it. And after that, he left. And Good. the commandant was very, very pleased. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I don't know whether that was what made them to make me cadet sergeant after uh, General <laughs> Gowan. Gowan was the first African cadet sergeant, and I was the next one. At Sandhurst? At Sandhurst. Oh, wow. So, and that, that was quite a reputable oh, position. It was, to well, uh, yeah. But Gowan and Co, they met him too. They oh, met okay. Him. Kuma was there. I said, you know, Kuma, he, collect, he was still doing it. He was all Africa. He wanted to talk to us. <laughs> or perfance. <laughs> <laughs> Kuma show boy. Well, it was very nice. It was a very big deal. Two Love times it. I met him, Kuma. When I transferred to the Air Force yeah. and went to do my advanced flying in Turn Hill in England, mm. he was also in England again. He came. I remember he came with Adama Fio. Boatin. Boatin has a son in England. Paul. Paul, that's it. Paul. He that's Kweku Boatin. Kweku, Kweku, Kweku Boatin came with yeah. him, Adam Afio, and one other minister. They came to, mm. to see us. And it's, it's in this, it's in in this book. book. Okay, we'll, we'll see it. that. <laughs> okay, so we <laughs> will... I just want to say he showed keen interest. He was mm -hmm. keen to make sure that what he was heading was moving well and whatnot. All right. Thank you very much. So we are speaking with um, Air Marshal. Ashley Larson, and he's taking us through the formative years of, you know, and how he entered the army and all that. And I think it's been interesting so far. We'll bring this one to a close and, st and then um, have another episode where he will take us through the real course of his career as an officer, converting from regular army into Air Force and all that. But for now, this is where we lower the curtains. It's been Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa, and you heard Emma Shaw, Ashley Larson, and Wing Commander Patrick Sobojo. See you next week. <laughs>